along with uh, team captains, pitcher Evan McKendry and catcher Michael Amditas. Um, Graham over here has got the microphone. Here's what we're going to do with the format. We're going to have coach make an opening statement about the regional. We'll take questions just for the student athletes, and then once questions for the student athletes are done, we'll let them go, and then we'll circle back with questions for coach. And we'll go ahead and turn it over to coach. Thank you. Uh, obviously, very excited to be here uh, after a couple years not making it to the regionals. Uh, being back certainly feels like where we belong, the Miami program that's been to the NCAA tournament uh, for so many years, and I've been fortunate to be a part of a lot of them as a player and a coach. So we're excited. Um, certainly, it would have been good if we could be at home. Obviously, it gives you a better advantage, but um, you know, we understand. Uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't do what we needed to do to host, so we were kind of on the bubble there. And so uh, this is our first time, uh, be, my first time here. Uh, I still have yet to see the stadium, but I know from what I've heard and everything, just kind of pulling up on the backside, it looks like a beautiful stadium. And uh, we're looking forward to the opportunity. You know, we got a lot of young guys on our team, uh, no seniors. Uh, we got 14, uh, 10 freshmen, 14 seniors, 14 sophomores, and six juniors that make up our team. And uh, none of them played in the regionals which is unusual, again, for a Miami team. But uh, it's an exciting team. It's been a lot of fun. It's my first year as a head coach. It's been in my 20 years. Obviously, it's my first year as a head coach, but in my 20 years of coaching, it's been an absolute blast. It's been the funnest year I've ever been a part of, and I've been on a couple of national championship teams, but it's just been a lot of fun. And our guys are looking forward to the opportunity. Um, while I have this opportunity, I would like to bring up something that I know is really a hot topic in uh, college baseball, and that's the volunteer assistant which I started out as and did it for three years. I was fortunate that this, the timing of it, I was able to step in and become the recruiter um, after my three years as a volunteer. But that's normally not the case. And our sport is such a difficult sport with all the limitations that we get, the biggest one being scholarships. But you basically, you got 35 players and you got three paid coaches. And you have a volunteer, which is a terrible, terrible title for the coach, by the way because he's putting in as much hours when he's there. I mean, he's putting in as much hours as anybody. And there's a lot of responsibility. You think about it. you got four coaches on staff, you got a pitching coach, you got a hitting coach, you need somebody to coach the infielders, you need somebody to coach the outfielders. There's base running in our sport. There's, there's all kinds of facets that go into it. And so, you know, a lot of times volunteers, they can't afford to be there all day. they got to have another job. They got to work somewhere else. So now we're talking about really just three coaches being there a lot of times. And of course, these guys are trying to move up the ladder. We're trying to get them prepared to be a, a paid assistant. Volunteers cannot go out on the road. Uh, so it really makes it very difficult for us to grow our sport. I mean, if I'm hiring somebody, our volunteer is a head coach, was a head coach at Indiana State, at Illinois State. And he was there. Uh, as a head coach for four years. Uh, I can assure you he cannot stay as a volunteer for many years in our program by us just paying him through camp. And some programs have more of an opportunity to pay through their camp than others. Most don't. Most don't. So it makes it very, very difficult. And I know it's something as a college coach, I just want to bring it to the forefront and, uh, and, and make people aware of how important it is for our sport and the need for it. We put in more hours Arguably, you could say it in any other sport, we play more games, we spend more hours at the ballpark. A 7 o'clock game, we're not showing up at 5 o'clock. I mean, our people are there very, very early. We're there till 11 o'clock at night, sometimes later. And you're talking about all the games we play during the regular season and postseason. It's a lot of time we put into it, and I certainly feel like it deserves the respect from our, uh, you know, and the proper people that are in place to make this happen. And so I just want to make that put that out there and make people aware because it's something that we feel very strongly about. So thank you. Thanks, Coach, for your opening statement and comments. Again, just a reminder of the format. Graham's got the microphone. We're going to do questions for the student athletes first. And after questions for the student athletes, we'll let them know and we'll circle back with questions for Coach. We'll go ahead and start with Danny here in the front right. We'll get the microphone over here to him.
Miami uh, coming back to the tournament, uh, being a part of that, the tradition uh, back going again for Miami? Of course, uh, the past two years obviously haven't gone the way we really wanted to. But uh, being here for those two seasons, obviously nobody was happy with the outcome. So once Gina took over, he pretty much installed that we're taking our team and this program back where it belongs. And from the time he took over to now, we've been working on getting better and better every day, trying to get the energy back into the program. I think we've done a good job. Go ahead here to Steve in the middle. Michael, you guys were in the mix to uh, possibly host a regional. How do you kind of manage those expectations when you find out, you know what, we've got to go on the road and be a number two? Um, we just got to stick with the same plan we've been going with it the whole season, um, going hard every game and playing every game like it's our last, our biggest game of the year. That's kind of been our motto. And, uh, you know, no, no difference in how we play, just, just got to keep the same momentum going. <coughs> Again, questions for the student-athletes, and Graham will get the microphone to you. Any other questions for the players, okay? Uh, Evan, Mike, you guys both talk about the uh, coach Damari mentioned, the, uh, the youth on your squad, so maybe talk a little bit about the young players and also the leadership that you guys have had to uh, show those young players. Evan, why don't we go ahead and start with you? Sure. So we definitely have a very young team, that we all know that. But I don't think it's going to be much of an issue just because it's a young team, but it's a young and energetic squad. We all come out with a lot of energy every day to play. The freshmen, I mean, a lot of them you wouldn't even think they're freshmen from opening day until now. They play like they're sophomores and juniors. So um, the lack of experience really isn't much of an issue. Michael, anything to add there? Yeah, I was kind of feeding off Evan there. Uh, the freshmen, you couldn't even tell they're freshmen. And, um, the season's been long enough now that, I mean, they're really not freshmen anymore. We've been going past the whole year of baseball, and um, the chemistry of this team is incredible, and we all bond together and play as one, so it's a good team overall. All right, again, any other questions for the players? We'll stay with this gentleman. One forward for uh, both uh, you guys. A little bit more about the, uh, the tradition of Miami, uh, the tradition you carry with you here to the tournament. It's been two years, but Miami had that long streak, and what the tradition means to you. Sure, so I mean, I grew up around the park, I've been going to games since I was a little kid, so coming here I knew what it was like, I knew every year Miami's in the postseason, Miami's playing for a national championship, so these past two years not taking the team where we should be, it was definitely, it took a toll on all of us, but we all know what Miami is and what we, what it stands for, so we're ready to take us back with them. Uh, yeah, same thing there, you know, um, Miami's had a great tradition and uh, we came in freshman year, we didn't make it the past two years, and that took a toll on us, and we know that it's expected to be here, and it's just, uh, you know, we're happy to be back. Again, any other questions for the players, and we'll go start with questions for Coach. Anything else? All right, thank you, fellas. Have a good open practice here, and we'll uh, see you later on through the weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks. All right, who wants to lead off with uh, questions for Coach? We'll start with Ben over here to Coach's uh, left. Hey, Coach, I know entering the ACC tournament, I think y'all had won like 14 or 16 heading into it. What do you think maybe flipped the switch there in the middle of the season? Was there anything specific you point to, or was it just a matter of how the team coming together? No, I can't, because we were, we were playing without all our bullets. Our top two starters were out during some of those games, and our starting shortstop was our third, third hole hitter, and arguably our most talented player, weren't playing during some of those games, but they're back which is great. We have them back now, but it's amazing. We've, we've played very well, which tells you a lot about this team. Um, we've played very well, and guys, that means other guys have had to, had to step up. Some guys have had to play different positions or out of position, and some pitchers obviously have had to step up. We, we moved our number four, who was a freshman, pitching against, well, in our conference, the best pitcher for Louisville. He threw against him, matched up with him in the first game of the series. And, um, and he threw against Virginia Tech's lefty, who was one of the better lefties we faced all year. So we, I mean, we had to make some adjustments there, and our number three got pushed up to as the number two, and it took somebody out of the pen to be our number three. So we have had made adjustments, but um, we still got some kinks to work out, but, but we are playing better, and so you're right, we have won a lot more games here, it kind of got us into this position to be in that talk of possibly even hosting, which we were. Again, questions for Coach, we'll get the microphone to you. We can stay with Ben for a follow-up. Actually, we'll go to Steve here, and we'll get back to Ben. 
Coach, uh, with the explosion of social media and coverage of college baseball, there's all these projections about where you're going to go and that sort of stuff. As a coach, you know, obviously the players are aware of it, but how do you kind of manage those expectations to kind of keep them focused on the task at hand? Well, that's just every day talking to them, you know. And, and we talk to them. We don't hide behind it. You know, we, you know, I, I'm very honest with our players. I told them easily. I think if we won the North Carolina game in the ACC tournament, probably a good chance we're going to host. And after the game when we lost, I told him, you know what, you just left it up to the committee probably right now. We're on that bubble, and that's not a place where I want our program to be. We've made great strides from the last few years, there's no doubt. I don't want to deny that, take anything away from it, but that's not where I want as a coach forever long I'm here. Uh, I want our program to be up. I want it to be like the old days where I know, you know, we know we're going to be hosting, and we know where, uh, you know, we play the kind of season that we need to play, that we're, somebody's going to have to beat us at our park. Having said that, I've told the players all along, and this is arguably one of the toughest places to play. I haven't been here yet, but I've been told and heard, and I can only imagine. But we have one on the road. Uh, as a former player, we've won on the road, I know, in Gainesville. As a former coach, we've won on the road, Mississippi, uh, back in 06, with four freshmen in our lineup, which is amazing because we have four freshmen in our lineup this year. Um, so, you know, it just makes it harder, there's no doubt, but certainly it's it's going to be one heck, heck of an experience, I know that, and our guys are looking forward to it. But I just try to talk to them every day and be honest with them and tell them, you know, where I think we're at. Don't try to sugarcoat anything. And, uh, you know, basically, you know, that's kind of how I handle it. Go ahead and get it back to Ben. Then we'll go back over to Brett here. Coach, kind of twofold. One, do you know who you're starting tomorrow? And uh, the second part of that, having moved a bunch of guys through the rotation, I mean, how much do you... How much confidence does that give you in the depth of your starting rotation? Well, it helps now you have having guys back that you can now maybe the, the bullpen might get a little deeper now because those guys that were starting might possibly, again, you never know how many games you're going to play in this. you got to be prepared possibly to play five, I guess, but three to five, I guess, hopefully. Hopefully not two. Um, but, you know, we uh, it, it certainly helps. In regards to who we're throwing, we still don't know because we got three guys that are arguably could be all – our number one guy, to be honest. Evan McKentry was basically our number one last year. He was our number one this year before he went down. Uh, Chris McMahon uh, is a sophomore, but should be a top pick next year, first-round type guy that's probably got as good arm as anybody we have. And then, you know, Ryan Van Bell's been our best pitcher all year, the new guy. So we're still looking at the video. You know, this the, the tournament, everything happens so fast, and you're, we're trying to watch all the video, trying to watch matchups of different teams and who matches up best with them. So we have not announced it yet, but we will hear shortly, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, we don't know yet. Go ahead and go to Brett here in the second row. The coach is right. You've got your fair share of power guys in the middle of the lineup. You've got some good contact guys down in the lineup. How do you characterize the well, well-rounded well uh, threat that your lineup gives and is able to generate contact one through nine? Yeah. It, it, it's a relatively balanced lineup, like you just said. I mean, I always seem to pop out Terrell because he hits 22 home runs and he's hitting seventh in our lineup, which maybe kind of defines our lineup, I guess. You know, um, but you know, it, it's interesting. Those freshmen are one, two, four, and six hitters. Our freshmen, uh, you know, so and, and the rest of them basically are sophomores. The only junior, if we ever have it, uh, Crosby in the lineup, he's our only junior. Mike's a redshirt sophomore. Really didn't play his first two years. He's been playing with some bad luck with injuries. But um, so it's uh, yeah, you know, it's it, we got we have some balance. We got some guys who can run a little bit. We got some guys who can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Um, yeah, we do have some guys who can put in play. Uh, we strike out a little bit too, but that's part of it. When you got guys that hit for power, but. Um, it's certainly a big difference from the last couple of years. That, if anybody's asking me, what was it that kept us out of the NCAA tournament the last couple of years? Scoring runs. That sticks out very, very well in my mind. And our hitting coach this year has done an unbelievable job of turning it around. And we've changed a lot of things we've done. And I was the hitting coach, by the way, for many years here. Um, but we had, to, we had to make some adjustments and had to swallow my pride and get a little humility and uh, you know, open it up to him and First year as a head coach, first year as a recruiting guy. Which, by the way, he was our volunteer, which we bumped up, which was great. But um, uh, so, yeah, you know, the, the offense has been the biggest, probably the biggest surprise of our team. Even I didn't see this coming. Uh, 
because our strength really going into the season was our pitching. And uh, our pitching is still very good. I think we finished second in the ACC, but the offense has certainly been something that I think has surprised a lot of people and, and maybe even me a little bit. Coach has got time for a couple more before we get him out of here. Uh, any other questions for Coach? All right, we'll go back to the cameras and Tom. Hey, Coach, obviously we were there with, with you on selection day, but just take through what are some of the things that stood out to you the most about this regional and some of the other teams involved? Well, it starts on Sunday night when we realized we weren't hosting. <laughs> that was the first, which nobody was shocked. So I prepared the guys, uh, you know what, and that is a chance. It's not going to happen. Um, so now you move forward, you wait for Monday. Our guys were pumped. They're excited. Again, you, we're not your typical Miami team because none of these guys have been to the NCAA tournament. And so they're, they're, they're all very excited. Um, in terms of where we're going, I, I, I'm not sure what I was thinking, to be honest with you. I, I, I knew and I know that Mississippi State, first of all, is a tough place to play. I also know they got a very good team, one that's experienced, and uh, of course an Omaha team from last year. So, um, but, you know, I told somebody this the other day, was asking me, you know, you, you guys go anywhere. I mean, the bottom line is everybody's playing really good. I, I don't recall any NCAA tournament I ever walked away from saying, geez, that team wasn't very good. I don't care if you're a four seed or a one seed, and some are better than others, I get it. But either you had a great season, if you're in this position right now, or you're very, very hot, one or the other. And we're facing one that's got 18 wins. Their last 18 games, they've won 18 games, I think, in a row. Uh, I don't know if anybody's done that. So they're, they're pretty hot, I'd say. So we need to be worried and worried. We need to be ready for Central Michigan. Uh, our guys need to make sure they're focused for them guys because uh, if we're not, we might not even play Mississippi State or play in front of this atmosphere. And that's been told to them a number of times. We've got to be ready for Central Michigan. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the most important thing. And we've got time for one more. Everybody wants to take it, but we'll leave it on the table. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you.